Hi! Yeah, Daniel Marks here again, or Danny, or Dan. You know, you get the, you get the drill. Um, let's see. Today I'm going to talk about distractions. And I've got a lot of them. I'm, I'm, I'm a fairly distractible person. Um, say I, I imagine to dwell a lot and think about different things and, you know, dart towards loud noises, things like that. Which I left the window open, which probably wasn't a good idea while I'm making a vlog. Um, because then I'm going to hear someone's, you know, someone's kid running down the street or, or someone shoot a BB gun or, or worse. Um, last week when I was filming a, one of the, a vlog that never materialized, um, we had a sonic boom that happened over top of us from um, when Obama's plane landed in Seattle. And I almost had a heart attack. That, that might have been interesting to show you. Um, but instead, we're going to talk about books and distraction and writing and things like that. And number one, okay, I started reading Bleeding Violet by Dia Reeves. I'm going to try to get this. Can you see the cover there? It's probably not too, that's better. Anyway, so, you know, it's got one of those dust covers on it. Um, I'm loving this book. I fell in love with that character. With um, Her name is Hannah. I fell in love with her from the absolute first chapter. She's bipolar, um, on lots of medications, could be violent. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. She says so. Um, there's so much stuff going on in this book that uh, makes me love the genre or, or how far the genre can stretch. Um, it actually reminds me of an adult series that's going on right now uh, by Stacia Kane called... Um, Unholy Ghosts, um, Unholy Ghosts, Unholy Magic, City of Ghosts, it, that's the trilogy. But this one is just like, it's very, the heroine is very damaged, which I love. I love me some damaged heroines. And um, the the town where she lives, it's, I think it's called Portero, Texas, obviously from the, from the dialects that are used in the book, um, is really bizarre. And some weird crap is going down in Portero, and I'm hooked. I am absolutely hooked. So you might want to pick up Bleeding Violet by Dia Reeves. Like, today? Could you, could you go get it? That would be awesome. Anyway, so what do I have to be distracted about? Right? That, like, this isn't a big enough distraction, reading, you know, because it's kind of, you know, it's, it's a little thick. But um, I, I did actually, I, I busted out my, my manuscript that I got the revision letter back on and printed that bad boy out. Aww. So you can see I've already started making notes on it. I could show this page till the cows came home. It won't make any difference because it's not going to look anything like that. I guarantee you. I've been rewriting the first chapter today and... Oh, uh, it needs it. Is what it, it needs it. It's a lot of exposition. I don't know if you don't know what exposition is. It's when, um, it's when the, the author, in this case me, um, kind of tells, does a lot of telling instead of showing you and... and sort of, you know, helping you to understand the world through um, scene and dialogue and stuff like that. So it's basically me pulling crap out of my butt and putting it on paper. I mean, there's some, there's some decent stuff in there, but mostly it's going to get changed. Um, I'm feeling hopeful because this, I feel like this is going to be the last time I do the revision. Um, some stuff came up today that, that absolutely feels like it's going to fit in there really well and, um, and pull together a lot of loose ends. So I'm excited about that. Now, two big distractions. One of them I blame on my wife, Caroline. And she's been on Facebook a lot. And I, you know, a long time ago I was on Facebook and started playing like, you know, Scrabble and things like that where, where people would um, instigate games with you and things. And, and I stopped. I totally stopped doing that and started to get to my work and doing that. But now, even though my wife complains I'm on the internet too much with Twitter and the like, Danny Marks at Danny Marks YA, all lowercase, on Twitter in case you want to follow me. Um, she's the one that got me into bar society. So now I have my own bar on um, Facebook and I can't stop checking it or serving drinks and things like that. I, you know, I wouldn't even go to bars very often, um, but it's weird. And I, so that's, that's, you know, that's a, that's a big distraction. I've only checked it 12 times today, maybe, 11, maybe 11 times. Um, so that's not too bad. Also, I and I think that I've come to the end of this distraction, 
if you've ever played a game called Limbo on Xbox, and I think it's only available for Xbox because it was a, um, it's, they're doing this platform thing for summer, these, these, these cheap games that are, like they're putting out one every month or something like that. And Limbo is this really dark, here's a, I don't know if I, here's some images from it. Um, Limbo's just this really dark, atmospheric game that really reminds me of the world of Velvet and Nyx. And um, I haven't really talked a whole lot about that. I mean, I guess people are getting an idea of it from the Kiss Me Deadly anthology. But um, Velvet is dead. Velvet's dead. So is Nick. And um, they are all living in purgatory. Them and a bunch of other people, their friends, Louisa and Logan, and among other people. And they're sort of in, in between heaven and hell, and um, their world is, is, is constantly being shaken up by psychic energies and bad mojo and stuff that go on in the living world, the world of the living. So um, there, it's all very gray there and uh, ashy and just very dry and um, creepy actually lots of shadows creeping around like tentacles and things which is really fun to write but when i downloaded limbo it really reminded me of the the world and and how how creepy it could be and so that that's kind of inspired me but um i was so distracted by it and so into it that i just went i just went straight through it and finished the game in i think i want to say it was like four days what can you do I don't know. Here's here's some here's a sad confession. Um, yesterday, we went to go see Scott Pilgrim, which it kind of irritates me that um, Scott Pilgrim, you know, it is supposed to be this really sort of current, um, sort of kind of nerdy, you know, very um, internety, graphic novel obsessed, you know, very geared towards this generation. It kind of bothers me that it's in like the bottom, it's in like 10th in the box office right now. And meanwhile, Eat, Pray, Love and The Expendables are at number one and two, which, I mean, if, if that's some kind of a stance being taken against, you know, taking beloved graphic novels or books or anything and um, putting them on the screen, uh, it's totally um, ill-conceived because I'm what I'm thinking is, is that you know Hollywood is a very Hollywood is a very shallow, fickle um, place, and the box office determines what you're going to get in the future. I mean, if you want to see, if you want to see more um, maudlin, uh, self, uh, is basically, I, I was talking about Eat, Pray, Love, but lots of stuff that just looks like it was put together by um, by a bunch of producers rather than a writer who's coming up with interesting things to say, uh, then by all means, go see The Expendables or Eat, Pray, Love or I mean, other or Vampire Suck for that matter, which frankly, I couldn't imagine being less funny. You know, I, 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 it just, just, just surprises me that people go see it. Um, I understand that it's funny because it's a parody of Twilight and whatever, but I didn't, I didn't think a, a single joke hit in that preview. Um, but I write humor at, on my adult side, so maybe that's, maybe that's a piece of it. And I, I think I got tired of those types of movies by Scary Movie 2, which was a long time ago, and I know they've done a lot in between. And I'm just kind of rambling. Why are you letting me ramble? You know, it's like you, you know where I am. You could knock on my door talking to all three of you that are watching actually I think it's more than that anyway so I've been talking for quite a while I'm not even sure I am going to see Scott Pilgrim today because I had a senior moment yesterday got the time and everything miss misread it completely showed up and uh, not so much didn't get to see it so we're going tonight because we're grown-ups and we can go on a work night I guess that's it um, what have you seen recently what are your distractions Tell me in the comments down there if you're on my YouTube channel or even on my blog. Go, comment. <laughs>